Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you for joining me for another of the Distressing Canoxide colour combination videos. We are getting towards the end of the alphabet now with Weathered Wood. We only have a few more left to get through and then the entire catalogue is there for you to view. Now Weathered Wood is a grey-blue, gray um, but I've always been a little bit not put off by it, but I don't use it very often, I think because it's so grey. Um, but that kind of also means that it is a neutral and it will work into almost any colour you wish. It is a cool colour, so it's easier to mix with the greens, blues and such. But I'm going to show you that in the two colour combinations that we're going to do. We're going to compare it to other colours in the range as well, so you can see whereabouts it sits here. And um, yeah, hopefully you'll pick up some tips and techniques as we go along too. Everything else, all the other colours that I've filmed so far, everything that comes in the alphabet before Weatherwood is available on the playlist I'll link that just up here for you um, and everything I'm using is linked down below so the brushes the blending mats obviously the ink pads and such so the first thing we're going to do is just swatch this on two white cardstock I use a smooth white cardstock so you can see um, how that looks without any texture at all in fact let's put this in the middle here now I find weathered wood does take a little bit of building up it may be because of my brush, but it may also be because it is quite a sort of a pale colour. So it takes me just a while to get that colour onto the cardstock. My ink pad isn't particularly juicy either. I just find that with some, some come really loaded with ink and some come a little bit drier. And even if I purchase another one or re-ink it, it still seems to be the same which is a little bit of a phenomenon with oxides, but there we go. There, we've built that up now. You can see how that is definitely a grey blue, so probably should sit more within the greys than the blues. Looking at the label, it's actually very similar to the label. In this bottom corner here, you've got the solid colour that it should be. That is really quite close, considering this is a printed label, and of course, um, colours, printing colours can be a little bit inaccurate sometimes, but definitely Ranger have got that pretty spot on. Now let's take a look at the colour chart, and this is something you can download for free from my website. You can go and grab that. That's all linked down in the description. Uh, there's Weathered Wood at the top there. You can see I must have really, um, really sort of loaded that up with ink to get it as deep and dark as that. I don't think I'd do that with this ink pad now. I think that's a little bit too dry. Uh, I don't actually have a reinker for this one. I thought I did, but I can't find it. So uh, I need to get a reinker, and maybe that will bring it as dark as that. But also this is laminated, which can sometimes make the colours look a little bit different. But this is weathered wood. So taking a look at other colours in the range. So we've got all the blues on this strip. Um, as you can see, Stormy Sky also has a bit of a grey tone to it. Everything else is deeper, darker, more blue, brighter. We'll just go to the next one as well, down Speckled Egg. Even that is much, much brighter. Now I'm also going to go to the greys. So they are towards the back here. Um, so yeah, we just have these three greys at the bottom here. Now Hickory Smoke is really quite similar which kind of reinforces the fact that weathered wood should perhaps be a grey rather than a blue but it is where it is it sits within the blues but definitely if you don't have weathered wood but you'd like to try these colour combinations maybe have a go with hickory smoke and let me know what you think how it worked so colour combinations speaking of let's go with uncharted mariner first i'm going to do this uh, on this end where I started blending. Uh, the reason I've put Weathered Wood in the middle is because I've got a darker and a lighter tone. So I want to put that in the middle. So Uncharted Mariner. I love this colour. It's no, you know, nobody um, can question that. This is my all-time favourite colour in the Distress range, since it was released at least. <laughs> um, so just blending that solid colour first, making sure that is all fully saturated nice blend there and then gently working up i don't want to go too far up with the uncharted mariner brush because of course i'm going to kind of overpower the weathered wood so i'm going to pick up a bit more weathered wood on my brush go back down in the middle here and then work my way downwards with that so almost pushing the blue back down a little but blending it as we go because they've both got cool bases they should blend quite nicely together but because they are light and dark 
really quite different shades that will take a little more blending than some but I think that's actually worked really nicely together there we go yeah that's worked beautifully isn't it so there okay perfect I really like those two together on their own um, but that is quite a jump from dark to light so what we then need to go and do ideally is even lighter and I'm going to do that with lost shadow just because lost shadow is oh my labels come off there I'll need to re-glue that lost shadow is a gray so it's a neutral but it is a very very pale one and it's a cool gray so it's kind of got this silvery almost lilac property to it but it does fall within the cools so it's going to work really nicely with these blues I hope <laughs> as I've said before I don't actually test these out so uh, I, I do them with you so you sort of see what I think will work and then we try them out together but yeah that is blending beautifully perfect really like that actually how they those two have worked together I've got a little bit of a mark there and I'm not sure I think that's something on the paper where the paper's picked up the color a little differently to the rest of the paper but we'll see how that all dries but that is gorgeous and it's so uncharted mariner into weathered wood almost as a middleman between the deep blue and the very pale gray so there's your tonal color combination let's go with something a little bit different now so for this one, I'm going to go into some brighter colours. So from the, the sort of cooler, uh, paler weathered wood into nice, deep, dark, evergreen bough, peeled paint and mustard seed to bring a pop of colour. To show you can use neutrals alongside brighter colours. So I'm going to put the weathered wood at the end. So this is like the grey, the neutral at the end here. Now, the reason I chose evergreen bow was because I was looking at greens and this is kind of, it is a green, but it's a blue green. It's got a hint of blue in it. So because they've both got a similar blue base, I think they're going to work quite nicely into each other. There we go. And this is where my color chart comes in really handy because I can say, so we've got weathered wood at the top here and then I've got evergreen bow on this one and I can literally say well I think I'd like to go into a green I can put the two together and I can sort of do this and go okay where would that sit and it's when I hit there you can see but oh do you know what they actually look like they would work nicely now obviously my one is paler as I said it's not quite as deep and dark as my swatch on there but we'll see how it goes so evergreen bow I'm hoping these will work nicely together again another um, color that I really really love this evergreen bow one so working circles so I kind of visualize the patch of color the strip of color where it's going to be solid and I work through that first loading up the color and it's that then that color that I start to blend down or up into the previous one so I don't work on the blend line until I've got the solid patch sorted. Do you know what that has worked? It's worked really nicely, those two together. So I'll put a little more, a little more colour just up here to help blend into the next one, which is going to be the peeled paint. So now we're taking the green base from Evergreen Bow and going into a bright green. So again, work on that solid patch of colour first without any blending. Don't think about the blending just yet. And then I'm probably going to add a little more evergreen bow to my brush here. Start in the solid and in small circles, just work my way up into the peeled paint. There we go. Nice blend between those two as well. Nice and easy. Let's just give this bit of a wipe a bit of a clean up and lastly we're going to go into mustard seed so a pop of bright yellow on the end so it's amazing how we can then go from the cool gray weathered wood into the bright yellow just by choosing the right middlemen 
as such, or middle women, if you wish. So there we go. Sometimes you find that a lighter colour just doesn't help blending. Sometimes you need to go back to the darker colour, and this seems to be the case here with pill paint and mustard seed. Mustard seed is lovely and bright and juicy, but I need the green of the peeled paint to blend this in. So I'm just going to work over with what I've already got on my brush first. And that's actually blended quite nice, it's not too bad. I've got a bit of patchiness there, but I think that's just where the dye is soaking in. So hopefully that will dry nice and smooth. Isn't that just lovely? Whatever the cards, so my cardstock are all mixed scraps. I try to stick to smooth white stamping cardstock. Sometimes I get some rogue pieces going there. I think that's happened with this one. It's got a very slight texture to it, so it's not as smooth. And then you get these textures, but I actually quite like those. And if you really don't like those and you find that happening, you can just sprinkle a little bit of water on there to kind of disguise them and add to the texture instead of going for a super smooth finish. So that is two colour combinations using the gorgeous weathered wood. So I've got weathered wood in the middle here and I've got it on the end here. What a beautiful colour, definitely one that I will be using more often, mixing into others. I'd love to see this going into some purples and some pinks, trying all those out. But I hope you can join me for the rest of this colour combination series on YouTube. You can check out the playlist just here with everything that's been done so far. And if you haven't already, I would absolutely love it if you could give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel just here. Take care, everybody. I'll see you again very soon.